Hi. Hi. So using dropdowns might not be the best idea and I'm gonna tell you all about it. Welcome to another episode of my weekly design tips and these tips are not copied from Instagram like everybody else does but instead they're based on our own experiences and real world products that we've built in the last 22 years. Ready? Let's go. Tip 1. Dropdowns. Dropdown lists are a good idea if you need the user to pick from a very long list, but very often I see dropdowns with two choices or three, and I swear I once saw a dropdown that only had one option inside. That's insane. The problem with dropdowns is that you don't see all the available options right away. They're hidden under an extra tap or a click. If you only have a couple of options, show them right away. One idea is to use radio buttons, or better yet, radio button cards like these. They are big enough to comfortably click or tap. Don't hide stuff away in a dropdown and your users will love you. Tip 2. Dropdowns versus tabbed lists. And if for some reason you don't like radio buttons because TV killed the radio or something, you can just use tabs or as iOS calls it, segmented control. In most cases you can probably fit up to 5 items into a tabbed list like that and it's almost always better than a drop down. Tip 3. Toggles. Toggles came to prominence with the iPhone and were brought to the web eventually. They're often used the wrong way though. Here's the easiest explanation. If you need to confirm the action with a button, like in this case, then use a checkbox instead of the toggle. If the action happens without a button, like turning on the dark mode or turning it off, then it can stay a toggle if you really want to use them. Just make sure they're big and easy to both click and tap. Tip 4. Toggles and checkboxes. Because toggles are non-exclusive, you can turn them on or off individually. They're often compared to checkboxes. Because, you know, a radio button is exclusive, you turn one on to turn off the other. But toggles are not the same as checkboxes and they should mostly be used for immediate action like in tip number 3 or on mobile devices where they belong. Of course responsive websites can also use them on phones if necessary. Just remember that if you have a lot of yes or no options in the list, always use checkboxes on the web. Tip 5. Checkbox alignment. And while we're there, always align your checkboxes to the middle of the first line of text. If the text is longer, don't ever align it to the middle of the text block. The checkbox simply belongs to that first sentence and it makes it a lot easier to read and see what you're actually turning on. And that's it for today. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And of course, don't mix your toggles with your checkboxes, please. Cheers. Uh -huh.